Gigantic. Hey, it's the Raw after WrestleMania 2024, and CM Punk, that lovable scamp, just can't let Drew McIntyre get another shot at that World Heavyweight Championship. Not yet. Cody's first night as champ tonight. The Rock made an appearance. Uh, there was a, a Bo Dallas tease, potentially, tonight. It was an eventful Raw after Mania. I'm Glenn Rubenstein, joined by Matt Morgan and Raj Geary. We're here to power through it. This isn't going to be a show where we go segment by segment and talk about it in the nuance and the ring psychology. No, we're going to give you the highs, the lows, and our thoughts about the state of WWE. Matt, overall, how did you feel about the Raw after Mania last night, after such a big Mania last night? They did a good job. The, 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 back in the day, the Raw after Mania was always the biggest Raw of the year. It was always the biggest Raw as well because that's when they bring up the new, quote-unquote, next big thing. Um, not pun intended just for Brock Lesnar, but other big stars along the way that were going to be future stars for WWE. If you were in developmental, you were always eyed on that day after WrestleMania, Monday Night Raw, and always the hopes that you could be called up on that show. Um but tonight they did while well, they may not have brought somebody, you know, up. I could argue Jade Cargill was kind of put in that spot. But but yeah. um she's already debuted though. Um it was a packed, packed, packed Monday Night Raw, major star power. A lot of things moved on the show um and progressed forward. A lot of cool angles. We'll get into it. The Jade Cargill entrance was absolutely amazing. Then when she got in the ring, her entrance was even cooler. The camera shot from the aerial view was so dope. Um, I love these new angles they're taking. Um, Drew McIntyre's promo, if you notice, it kept going back between the hard camera and the handheld on the side of the ring. That was something new. They don't normally do that. Um, so they're doing so many things to really put their stamp on this new Triple H era. I know it's not like a Mark saying that, but I love it. And, and I, I thought tonight was awesome. Raj? I thought it was. I thought it was pretty good. I, you know, the the, the one, um, the, the one down, uh, the one bad thing I'd say is that it, there was nothing that made me feel like I got to tune in next week, right? Mm -hmm. Like you had CM Punk, John Cena, The Rock, all on the same show, but nothing was like, oh my god, what's going to happen next? Man, and this is something I've criticized both WWE and AEW for, and I hope AEW does it this week if they do get a bunch of new viewers with that CM Punk, Jack Perry thing, uh, that they have something that gets people tied in to tune in next week. And mm -hmm. I felt like this was the night to do something with Cody. I, I mean, they did with The Rock, but something that, um, and, and that's down the road, but something that gets people tuned in for next week. And I, I think Randy Orton is that guy, you know, like that doing that feud, Randy Orton turns heel, kills Cody. They have that history with legacy and everything. Um, mm -hmm. But I felt like this was the night to do it because obviously the, this is going to be one of the highest rated Raws of the year, if not the highest. And, uh, so say so say they did that. Wouldn't we be bitching and moaning that they try to squeeze 10 pounds of shit in a five-pound bag? Man. If they did piggyback Randy Orton coming in and turning him on, on Cody tonight on top of the wreck, uh, the, rock, wreck the Rock segment with Rock has to tell that part of the story of him riding off to the sunset. That's a very important storyline, marker. Yeah, they, had, I, they I, had to get through that. They had to get through that. I, and I hear you. You probably don't want, you know, yeah, doing both kind of waters the other mm -hmm. down. If you did Randy Orton, it, it would have watered down The Rock. But again, The Rock, you can only do it tonight because he's going he's off. Leaving. To, yeah, he's leaving. So I, I get can, it. Can, I you, just can, feel you, like, can you ask me one more thing, Raj? Why the hell did they have, like, how when they walked through that segment today, okay? Like, no, undoubtedly they did. And they said, yeah, and I'm going to ask to hold your title. And you're going to ask to hold mine. <laughs> Even though I just kicked the big Jesus out of you last week, made fun of your dog, made fun of your mom, cut <laughs> promos on your mom all week long. And Cody, sure, here you go. Here you go. Rock, where my I tied? I didn't understand that. That was so it was weird. stupid. That it was, was dumb. Yeah. They were a little too friendly during that part with, with everything that had happened. I agree. I, I think at times they make Cody look too nice. Yes. You know? <laughs> okay well let's look at the schedule of what's coming up we've got backlash okay so we've got the draft coming up at the end of this month and we got backlash the week after the draft may 4th then yeah. they're in saudi uh at the end of may they're gonna have king and queen of the ring there and then july 6th is money in the bank in toronto so cody's gonna have three high profile matches 
to be theory. announced soon, in theory, right? Um, I think he's going to be a fighting champ. I mean, he's the face of the company now. You can't have him pull a Roman and only work the main pay-per-views. Yeah, but you still have two world champs, so you don't need to... Yeah. I, I kind of like when they don't have the world championship defended on every pay-per-view. You, you, you kind of split it up, okay. and it makes those matches a little more I, important. I actually like Roman being away a little bit. I did mm -hmm. think it had way more mystery, more prestige when he would uh, have... Uh, that's a complete contradiction of what I used to think. But as I got used to Roman doing it, it just felt like way more of an important deal to me as time continued to build and go on, and we would see him you know, every so often defending that title always felt like such a big deal. Like we're getting a major pay-per-view out of this. If he showed up and fought Jey Uso, you know, or whoever it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for yeah. sure. When, when, when he would appear, I mean, a Roman title defense felt way different than a Seth title defense. It did. Oh, and clash of the castles in mid June. So, okay. So look, Drew, we know Drew is going to get his rematch at clash in the castle. I hope so. Um, Sammy, they're going to have Cody. I mean, Sammy in Toronto is a no brainer, but they're going to have Cody on money in the bank. Everyone, they're going to get their biggest matches for Saudi. So maybe backlash. They do something a little different. You know, Logan Paul, not to just count Logan Paul, Logan Paul is certainly at the level now. We're oh, with yeah. the U.S. title. I mean, that could main event a B level pay per view. The yeah. right opponent. The yeah, right Knight. opponent. Yeah. You mean with, with, with Cody, right? Well, I was always going to say if Cody sits it out and they want to if, defend a major title. If they wanted to steal a pay-per-view main event, they could do a Logan Paul LA Knight on a B pay-per-view. Sure. Yeah. But you also have two world titles, so, you know. You, yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Damian Priest, no, he doesn't feel like a world champion. Yeah, I was just going to say, Damian video. Priest not versus Drew McIntyre? You think that can... I mean, oh, I can't believe I'm saying this because I love Damian Priest since he was Punishment Martinez, but do you uh, think Damian Priest not against Drew is a main event for Backlash? Wait, what? Not when he's not. So if they're saving Drew going for the World Heavyweight Championship uh, in Scotland, Scotland uh -huh. Backlash is coming up in May. Like, yeah, who who headlines that? Jey Uso, right? Did he just win the Jay and Priest is good? I don't know, but yeah, mm. I mean, we'll see. It does feel like a like a, a yeah. World. It feels like an IC title match, right? Yeah, it does. But that's how kind of set. I don't know. I don't know. Just, yeah, we're just, I, we're just talking. Weird. We're just thinking. Yeah, it's kind of what we're what I was saying last night. You know, uh, Damian Priest has he's in that edge spot right now where he's a kind of a mid card guy, upper mid card that gets the world title, and he's got this opportunity right now before you know they're taking it off of him to make himself into a star. So let's see if he can do it. You gotta yeah. be careful. You gotta be careful with him. He's got the best wrestling voice ever. I would have killed to have that bass in my voice that he has because yeah. he talks like he looks and 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 god i love this promo then our truth coming in and screwing it up that was, great. It was hilarious it was hilarious yeah. as much as i laugh at that remember i told you guys like they've got to they've got to be careful with this especially with him now as champion mm -hmm. yeah. um is that we know that layer of his character now uh, he could be funny um he could be entertaining when he needs yeah. to be but we need to see shit kicker heavyweight champion right now and hopefully they do show us that. So he does get a legit opportunity with it and see what he does do with it. Because you're right, he's on borrowed time with that title. And and listen, even if he loses it as a transitional champion, they're going to get it back on him. But just like they did Edge. Um, Edge didn't have it for a long time when he first won it. And they, they, they just, he was supposed to be a transitional champion on purpose. But then they saw what he did with it. And they wanted to put it back on him, and they did. They gave him a legitimate one with it, if you'll remember. Mm -hmm. Um but anyways, um, yeah. I'm talking too much. Sorry. <laughs> no, no I, I and, and and I agree 100. percent I feel like uh, what you're mentioning, Matt, with our truth, our truth. I, I thought he was a show stealer tonight. Yeah. Great. <laughs> but, but put him in there. You know, have him with Dominic and JD. Yeah. Have him in there with uh, Damien now. If you're elevating I mean, Damien, if you want to make a main event, yeah. keep him out of those segments. What's your beef with that, Glenn? No, I think if you built it right with our truth, you could legitimately. I don't know that you could do a pay. You could main event a Raw or a SmackDown with Truth versus Priest for the World Heavyweight Championship. Oh, yeah. If you built oh, that really yeah. seriously, yes. and that would, and people even that could be a mankind moment. If Truth is the one right. to take the title off Priest, no, that, you, know, you don't. Do that that. Is, that you is. would have to build it correctly. You would have to build it correctly. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. Tonight it's again, really we're over. 
We're going to try and do this in a, a semi-concise fashion. I know you've listened to us talk uh, now for like six hours over the last three days. So uh, Super Chats tonight, we're going to get to them, get them in. Remember, all proceeds we receive from Super Chats and advertising this quarter are going to Culture City. They build sensory inclusive experiences for neurodivergent fans. They're a nonprofit. They're a nonprofit designee charity for... Uh, Q2. So yes, we'll get to your super chats and uh, let's start with the top of the show though quickly, which was like an hour long segment. Triple H came out. Thank the fans. It is the Triple H era. They've made that loud and clear uh, from WWE. Oh, okay. um, he brought Cody out. They had a very nice video package recapping his journey. Um, Cody was confronted by The Rock who the crowd, this was not a rock face turn. Even when he tried to be serious and sincere, the crowd was still giving him some justified uh, yes. uh, hard times. Um, but what was very interesting is they did say, okay, their one-on-one -on -one is going to happen down the line. And then The Rock handed Cody a mysterious item. Uh, what, what do you think it was? Uh, like his latest uh, mashups and DJ set on a USB drive? I don't know. Uh, footage from Brawl <laughs> Out, perhaps. Um, <laughs> You, I mean, you thought about that, didn't you? You put the thought into that. The answer. one I saw online, because people will not let this go, they were like, it's MJF's diamond ring from AEW. I would, my head would explode and yeah. mark them <laughs> if that it's, happened. It's That's not. The MJF is with AEW for years. Yeah, I know. I know. But and, 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 I'm not reporting this. Uh, you know, someone was asking me on Twitter, like, do you want to put your name to it? I'm like, ah. I heard from a good source. Um, but I never double sourced it, so this isn't a report or anything. But I heard that MJF uh, signed a new contract with AEW last year. And okay, question. I don't know if it's 100% true. Can't you get out of your contract? You can't get out of your contract? No, unless really. Tony releases him. Okay, so there's <laughs> From no Facebook way. Time. There's no, yeah, <laughs> yes. there's no way he watched WrestleMania and wasn't like. Fuck, I need to be there. <laughs> There's no way he he's a huge true wrestling fan at heart. He yeah. works his ass off. He needs to be there, dude. And we see WWE will give you a legit opportunity to be yourself, whatever you played somewhere else, if they think it will be successful. Somewhere this Vince bullshit of oh, sorry, you were a star there. I need to embarrass you here. You can't be a star. That shit's gone. Those days right. are gone. Yeah. So I hope he did. I, I know he watched it, but I hope, you know, he had that thought like, I need to get the fuck out of here. MJF under this regime is Ugh. way different than under Vince, right? Oh, it's yes. a different different animal. I mean, Triple H, it won't be wasted, whereas it would have been nope. with Vince. So I, I agree yeah. 100%. You know, I agree. Like, he will, he will be way more successful if he were to come in now. But I, the word I had heard, uh, and again, don't – it's not double-sourced. It's not a report. I never reported it. But I had heard people saying that. He had signed mm -hmm. last year for a few years. So, yeah. And I believe it. Sure. Um, well, one, one, one thing real quick. Someone on Twitter had mentioned, you know, what the uh, what the rock handed to Cody. And they said, uh -huh. you know, when he said, you broke my heart, that would yeah. have been he, you know, the main event with Roman Reigns, you know, like right. that broke the rock's heart. And he handed the, the belt, you know, the side plates like he had had them made oh. for himself. And he handed that to Cody because that no Cody no, no those are small. too big okay. those okay. are too big. Well, to that Raj, when you said you broke, I was like, so he handed him half of a locket, and the Rock has the other half. <laughs> and Cody will keep one, and the Rock will keep one. No, if, um, if we see uh, Cody come out with a key on his necklace next week, we'll know what's up. Uh, I saw online um, from a couple of people they think it is um, part of the Ulafala that Roman wore as the tribal chief that red lay that led to a red ceremonial it could, be. could be part of that i Maybe. mean we'll see right like this or this builds mystery. is it a piece or is it something stupid like remember that night the coat like he went out and whispered in cody's ear like and said to, why are you laughing yeah. wasn't that funny no no because um, it was something stupid and i was like oh so really stupid like remember when he came out that week on smackdown or whatever yeah. well, and whispered in his ear that he was going to make him bloody later that night. We found out yeah. after the fact that then he beat the crap out of him. It could be something lame like that where it's a piece of, of Cody's like clothing with blood on it. Like, I, I don't know. I just know that it's asking me. Everybody's asking questions about it. That's a good thing. But again, where's it going to go? Because we're not going to see this cat for how many months now? Do we know? 
yeah. uh, probably like my guess is that Rock versus Cody happens in Saudi uh, late October, early November. So mm. it's down the road because SummerSlam's August 3rd. There, I, I don't see any way that Rock is back by then filming two movies back to back. Well, Louis Trees Buck 99 saying that the Rock and Cody matches because the Rock set his bus on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I saw some people mention that. The only thing with that is if it's like a lighter or something that The Rock handed him, then Cody needs to react and respond. You don't just get that handed to you and just look at him. You're right. You got to That's how they wait react. for him. That's how yeah. they've been writing for him. They also say, here you go, guys. Kick my ass. Yeah, take my title. Everything's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys hear that story last night about the, the watch? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Awesome. So... Yeah, so Dusty, it's a in the Cody documentary they talk about. Yeah, Dusty pawned off his watch so he could pay for Cody and his sister to go to acting school in L.A. And Nick Khan, Triple H, they and Bruce Pritchard, they went and they found that watch. Wow! Oh. And by all means, I think it's that exact watch. Um, I know so, some people are thinking yeah. like it's it's like the same watch, but not same the watch. actual watch. Right. So, so either way, okay, even if it's not the exact same one, let's pretend, worst case scenario, it's not. It's still an amazing gesture, and most yeah. importantly, of saying, look, your dad was here tonight. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. I thought that was awesome. That shows, again, a completely different Triple H than yeah. I mm-hmm. knew when I was there. Um, and <laughs> everything is completely different there, man. I'm very yeah. jealous of this locker room. I would have killed him in this <laughs> locker room. Man. But if it is the exact watch that Dusty had, oh my goodness! I mean, Incredible. it's two different stories. If it's the exact yeah. watch, or it's still, I still, I it's, it's still the same story though. As being wow, what an amazing brass to be able to do something cool like that on a special night because this is extra special. And for those who go, oh, because I know what Vince's opinion with this would be. Vince's opinion would be, oh, oh, really? Are you can do it now for everybody that's going to be world champion. Because once you do it for that, you got to do it for all. No, you don't. Everybody in that company gets how special this was, how different this was, and if yeah. they bring if they bring a story and they thunder like Cody did for the last two years to this company for ratings and merch sales and things like that, cool. I bet you they'll do it for you too. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Could you imagine their wives on their anniversaries after this, though, from now on? They're like, what? You got me a purse? But for Cody Rhodes, you went and tracked down his watch. And- <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, wh- what pressure on Cody's sister now? Because he's, she's like, fuck. Like, I yeah. really need to step it up a little bit. He sold the watch so I could go to acting school as yeah, well. Now the Amazon gift card is not going to Yeah. Work. Oh, man. Um, Good story, though. I'm glad you brought that yeah. up. That was cool. Uh, Great night tonight for NXT champs. Dragunov and Roxanne Perez both got nice showcase matches um, without being called up. So that was kind of different. We did see Jade Cargill get a squash match against Chelsea. That was good. Yeah, she looked great uh, tonight. Really just massive superstar. I saw some people bringing up like, oh, she's just Goldberg. She's uh, two move. Uh, athlete, it's like she just oh came on. This God. is what you should be doing. You oh don't want her God. wrestling 30 minute matches right now. No, God. you don't. You don't. Yeah. And if somebody's saying that, they're just hating for the sake of hating. And mm. I'm feeling they're not true, they're not real WWE fans. Honestly, that's my opinion. Hmm. Or they don't um, get it. They don't get the business, like how or, you build stars. And Or you know, they're jaded AEW fans that see another one of their former stars in the limelight in a much bigger company, and this is how you use her. To be fair, AEW did use her right on how they yeah. did start her off undefeated. You can't get better than that, so kudos to AEW for doing the right thing. But from the camera shots, just on her entrance alone shows you the night and day difference between the production. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, it was very cool. And then uh, we did have that Judgment Day celebration. I mean, so that image alone, come on, right now we got Priest's World Heavyweight Champ, Rhea is Women's Champ. Great and shot. Nice seeing uh, Dom and Rhea. Rhea back in the fold with Judgment Day. I felt like they yes. gave them a lot more distance uh, in recent sure. weeks. So this was cool. And I loved our truth crashing the party. And then that turning into a tag match with The Miz. And our truth got The Miz and John Cena to tag team together tonight. Right? How about that? <laughs> Isn't that wild that this was the first time that we've seen our truth and, and Cena tag? Well, it's a childhood hero. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but but they truth has been saying that for a while now, and tonight is the the first time we actually saw it. So yeah. I, I thought it was uh, it was it was cute, you know. And uh, and where was Ted DiBiase Jr. Because two of the Marines, we just needed the third. Oh yeah, that's right. Sorry, Go Rush. 
Well, I was just going to say that uh, awesome truth. Their first pay-per-view big match was against Cena and the rock. And uh, yeah, you know, here they are teaming, teaming with Cena kind of uh, the world, you know, kind of comes around. Yeah, it was, it was good. I think um, truth's crowd reaction night was, yeah, the crowd loves him. Uh, it was good. And I like it how they fun. did it. They didn't have Cena come out in the, in the beginning and it was, you know, it was a surprise. It was cool. Yeah. Um, so let's see what other high points. Are oh, this, uh, number one contenders match for the world heavyweight championship tonight. Uh, actually, let's talk about that. Second, let's talk about Sami Zayn, uh, quickly, man, they're going full Rocky three where Gable's favor that he wants is that one-on-one -on -one match. Sure. Yeah. We saw that they're doing we it. Saw that I know. Coming. Uh, um, but cool promo by Sammy. Love his promos are always very impassioned. He gets the crowd into it. I love whenever he's on TV, so I love all of that. And Creed won that rematch. We found out in the movie Creed that uh, Apollo Creed won. But uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I think it's a the Rocky storylines aren't used enough. I still, you know, Rocky Five is regarded as like the worst Rocky movie of all time. But Except that storyline, I, I think that storyline, if used right, I thought they could have used that for Sting and Darby. You know, like uh, Darby turns to the dark side. You know, it, it, I just think and it's the Bruno Larry Zabisco storyline. I feel like it can still be used today and it just Good hasn't reference. been used effectively. Good yeah. reference, Raj. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that was very well done. But the, the, I mean, it's clear they're putting the World Heavyweight Championship front and center. Uh, Priest looked great tonight. Uh, it's mm. weird that Bondage Undertaker is now becoming the <laughs> WWE version of what the internet has been uh, referring to Priest as. Um, Drew I'm surprised so they good. let Drew. It was. I'm surprised they let him get away with that though, because Damian's still on the come up. You know what I mean? I'm surprised they let him do yeah. that. Punk should be fair game. Seth, fair game. They're established main event act. This is your guy you're trying to get over. I'm surprised they let him say that. Priest is fucking cool. I mean, he has been since he was on the Indies as Punishment Martinez. He was cool in NXT, looking like the bad guy from Cyborg. Um, like he's he's just got a vibe. Bondage Undertaker, but Bondage Undertaker was <laughs> that's, that, that I couldn't yeah. stop laughing. <laughs> it was so yeah. good. Drew is just another level right now. He is yeah. so freaking great. Uh, I'm I'm going under the assumption that he's re-signed, even though he took yeah. him tonight. Jay oh, yes. in him, but uh, he is. He is yes. just on another level. He is outside of The Rock, uh, I, and I think he's the most entertaining person on Raw, and that includes Cody. Yeah. Um, so during Bronson Reed's promo backstage, there was a glitch, and you can make out the word hello, and people are saying that based on the end of the Bray Wyatt documentary, okay. that this might be uh, the build for Uncle Howdy, Bo Dallas, coming back in some capacity in WWE. I think it is. I do. I think if it's not Uncle Howie, there's another, there's supposed to be another layer to Bray Wyatt's fiend character mm -hmm. that was supposed to re debut more than what they just showed at the WrestleMania weekend of his newer outfit. It's supposed to be, Bo Dallas, my understanding, was supposed to do a character that was going to encapsulate part of the fiend, part Uncle Howie. And it's supposed to be something on it, like something crazy. But uh, I, I hope for his sake, because he was so talented. I watched him in FCW on his come up. He was the talent. He was the more talented of the two brothers. If you go back and you watch FCW, I'm not joking. When they were a tag team, those two, they were FCW Southern Tag Team Champions. He was the better of the two because he was younger. He was like 18. And yep. um, he was supposed to be like this next Randy Orton. No joke. I'm not exaggerating that. No, for sure. And, and, I mean, you saw they, the push they gave him. And they just gave him a shitty character when they got him on television. They couldn't resist. Mm -hmm. They did it to both of them, actually. Right. Yeah. Husky well, Harris. Right. But they screwed Bo with a Bo Leave crap. And <laughs> he needed to do that with him. He's a good looking kid, super charismatic, great fire as a baby face. He was a great seller. So I don't know. I'm very excited for him in real life. Oh, God. Sorry. That's so loud. Oh. <laughs> uh, the only thing I would uh, where there's a little caution here is yeah. Bo trying to do a Bray Wyatt character mm. gimmick he, because mm -hmm. Bray Wyatt, you know, he his creativity, everything else was, you know, one in a million. I mean, he was just he, he just thought outside the box. That doesn't mean that Bo has that same creativity. 
and to okay. kind of put him in uh, that character, that that type of character when he might not be. I mean, I will see. Maybe he is, but um, he you know, Ray White be... was so creative. Again, he doesn't have to copy. It doesn't have to be similar. You know what I mean? We'll we'll see. Yeah, he doesn't have to copy it, but they did make it with the flickering and everything. They did kind of do a yeah. lot of the Bray Wyatt stuff. Well, why can't he do wisely? Would Bray Wyatt copy wrote it? Like he cornered no. the market in it? I mean, WWE no. owns it. It's part of the lore. It's part of the no. Uh, of course not. But Bray Wyatt made it work because he is so creative. I, will Will Bo be able to add those? You know the. Superpowers? The layers in there. <laughs> well, look, so, so I mean, I was very critical of a lot of that, the, the superpower magic stuff, but Bray <laughs> was able to get it super over, right? Mm -hmm. But he has that personality. He has that charisma well, we to do it. I'm telling you, no one's going to agree with me because nobody watched him wrestle enough. I'm telling you, microphone in black tights, cut a promo, go. Bo Dallas was better. Telling you, wow. as crazy as you may think that is, go back and watch FCW. I swear to you on this. No, I mean that's why they went with him in NXT. He was champion for a while. I, I, I agree with you, Matt. I think he is a great talent. I just don't know. I, I think he's going to have such high expectations being in a, a, a Wyatt-ish character. Well, you got to believe, Rush. Right now, <laughs> it's uh, better than that for sure. Yeah, Liv Morgan attacked Rhea Ripley backstage, so setting something up for them. Potentially. Okay. I mean, look, we need someone to beat next. No offense to Liv Morgan or yeah. her fans, but yeah. there you go. You know, I think WWE is on such a tear right now. They're so hot that they shouldn't rest on their laurels right now like they do every year after WrestleMania. And yeah. then you see everything go on a downturn. Keep it hot. Keep it hot. And and then don't just feel like you need to give Rhea someone to beat. Don't feel like you get need to give Cody someone to beat get stuff that's hot so you you retain all these people that are tuning in for the first time and you know a lot of new fans and a lot of people that tuned out that are just so do you know so then let's be honest the only person that i think cody could have faced that's hot is drew mcintyre I think somebody drew, I think... that, somebody real quick somebody has to think has to be two things one has to be hot and two mm -hmm. has to be the heel in which the crowd is already conditioned to booing this person automatically mm -hmm. so they're not going to out cheer versus cody which will help cody because he needs to be in cheered situations still keep that in mind sorry yeah no for sure I, the only person i'd add to that is randy orton because they have that built-in storyline uh Friday. i think that would and it could be yeah i think randy orton you have the legs in the background you're going to put that on the same level of the storyline versus Roman Reigns, the bloodline with Cody? I don't think anything's going to be at yeah. that level yet, right now, but that's the the next hottest thing I think you could do right now. The personal stuff they could come up with will be incredible. Yes, undou undoubtedly. And Randy yeah. Orton hasn't been a heel in a while. so And I could see he's having such a good time right now. I could being see him just... He loves being a face right now, though. Yeah, but I could see him really sinking his teeth back into it i yeah. will see yeah it'll be a good story on him mm -hmm. um but no cody's gonna be on smackdown friday i assume they, they gotta tease something right like you can only be in the refractory period so long with the cody championship before the fans want to know what comes next and mm -hmm. uh i think randy could be good and they could build to that pretty naturally but tonight what they did give us was who's next for the world heavyweight championship in this uh, fatal four way, so we had Jay Uso, Bronson Reed, Drew McIntyre, and why am Ricochet. I blanking on that? Ricochet. Which ones? Ricochet. Which ones? Which ones not like the other? How does Ricochet just get an automatic? He was U.S. champ like a year ago. Well, he's been getting a bit of a push. He's been winning like every week the last. Uh... It's gonna oh, be exactly. the first. He's gonna be the first WWE Speed Champion. Thank you. All right, my bad. Um, I didn't see any of those ones. <laughs> But I, mean, I agree. Ricochet's I great. mean, no one thought Ricochet was winning this. Mm. Do I you mean, think they're get, they're giving Ricochet a little uh, push right now because they didn't get Will Ospreay? <laughs> like he's like, ah, hey, this is kind of <clears throat> like our 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 version. <laughs> Isn't he engaged or married to Samantha Irvin? Yeah, Samantha Irvin's so over right now. 
Maybe that's yeah. I'm, joking. I'm joking. <laughs> that's not why. She is. She is. I'm going off Michael camera Buffer, before you guys talk saying, about who's dating who again. I, I, I was saying that's why you're giving him a push. I'm joking. <laughs> that's not why they're giving him a push. Man. But I got goosebumps <laughs> tonight by her. She's, <laughs> What are you doing, Raj? Is that is that why Ricochet signed with WWE? Because never mind. Sorry. Um. Yeah. Okay. Anyhow, deep cut. Uh. Okay. Real quick, she gave she, that that yes. that woman's voice again gave me goosebumps tonight when they got they Cody asked her to redo it, and uh, yeah. re- she's so damn good. I'm sorry. I know you think I'm crazy. I do like her voice better than Pinkles. I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Wow. I do. I do. I do. Oh I no. Do. My wife thinks I'm nuts too. By the way. Okay. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Prisoner of the moment, Matt Morgan. Um, Dude, Spinkle and she new says, WWF okay. World W. Come on. Take that part out of it. <laughs> no, um, no. The I don't know. This contest is scheduled for one fall. Okay, but hear me out. If you listen to both of their voices and they say John Smith, okay, complete nobody. The way she says it, John Smith is going to feel like a bigger star. <laughs> Good for John Smith. I think, uh, I think, she's I think so she's the best good. since Finkel. I think she's the best. And Michael Buffer, okay. did you see that? He he put out a tweet today, uh, putting her over. Michael Buffer, who's done wow. cool. you know, Tyson fights and all the biggest boxing fights, and a bunch this? of Monday Nitros. How about this? She's better than him. She's awesome. I'm sorry. I think she is. I think she's. Let's best. get ready to rumble. Michael Buffer threatened to sue me once. Did he? I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. he did. <laughs> His domain name dropped. Let's get ready to rumble.com. Somebody else had it. And so I picked it up for the purpose of giving it to him. And before I could even do that, like his lawyers were on me. Oh, well. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Well, how nice of you, Glenn, just to randomly find uh, copyright for somebody that you don't know and just go, here you go. Here you go. <laughs> I hung out with this brother once. Remember, there was a video game called Ready to Rumble. Of course. Uh, similar, not based on the movie. There was a no. video game. Yeah, it was a whole thing. Yes. And Michael Buffer was there to judge the, or uh, Bruce Buffer was there to judge yeah. the Michael Buffer sound like contest. And mm-hmm. my friend won. Okay. And Bruce Buffer was like really nice to us. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, I'm going to get this to turn over. And then when I wrote that letter, they apologized for like such a threatening uh, letter. Well, Anyhow. There you go. Yes, Dro Davidian 999 super chat saying gigantic pop WWE WrestleMania 40 aka XL results. Here is my opinion. OMG, one of the best manias ever. The main event of the bloodline rules had the legend to John Cena, and the other part will be is this a rib? Is this a rib? I I don't know. Is it a riddle? Are they making fun of us? <laughs> I, I no. don't know. Hey, they give us is... 999. Make fun of me all you want if you pay me money. Okay. There you go. But we're not even getting the money. We're giving away to charity like good. Oh, people. that's true. Uh oh Majestic <laughs> Marie. Matt may be a prisoner of the moment. Raj is a prisoner prisoner of nostalgia. Yeah, well, I ain't gonna lie. She she's got it right. <laughs> yes. Uh J.R. Smith, two dollars saying good evening, guys. Our truth is absolutely amazing. He, <laughs> yeah, he is a national treasure. I mean, yeah. that's that is the one clip you sent us tonight during our text yeah. messages. <laughs> <laughs> uh JR Smith also uh highs gigantic pops numbers for the WrestleMania season, channel growth and charitable giving. Guys, that's like straight tiger's bloods. Hashtag winning. Whoa, quite yeah. a retro reference. What was that like 12 years ago? No? Thanks, thanks, JR Say hi to Ian. Yeah. I did make a uh an analogy for to Ooh. Charlie Sheen and uh Tiger's Blood with the whole AEW stuff. I, I don't know if that's where they got that. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so Drew McIntyre seemed like he was going to win tonight until CM Punk, that lovable scamp, America's sweetheart, showed up, grabbed his ankle, just giggling gleefully <laughs> as he kept Drew from winning. And then Jey Uso got the win in the pin. I, I got this question for you guys, uh, yeah. Matt uh, and uh, uh, they have done such a great job with CM Punk and Drew. Yeah, this feels like now like a WrestleMania match, and obviously they're going to get to it as soon as they can. But man, I almost feel like they should hold that off until Mania. When you look at the big matches that they have, you got Rock versus Roman, right? Rock versus yeah. Cody. If you take the Rock out of it, CM Punk versus Drew is right up there. It, oh God, it definitely is. I just like what you said though. You're saying, hey, WWE, don't lose your, your, your hot streak here. Stay hot. You know, stay right. with these 10 out of 10 storylines if you can in a perfect world to make people want to watch. That's one that could do some major water carrying for that company. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But again, when's Punk going to be back? Like, that's, heard any reports? 
he looks normal now. So I, he was saying it's going to be half the time of uh, the tricep tear that he had in AEW. So that would put him in an, another like month or two. Okay. Okay. And he teased. He said there's an international pay per view that hasn't been announced yeah. yet. And yeah. Yeah. Oh. Clash. And that's June. So that's coming up. But, but I don't I, think you do Drew and Punk at. at no, X-Men. because think, Drew has to win that, right? Obviously. Right. Yeah, he's got to win the belt, and you have Punk there. And you can yeah. do something after that, but yeah. When's that going to be? Clashes well. in June. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Clash in June. Money in the Bank July. Mm-hmm. Summer Slam usually. Okay, so it's maybe early August. That. Okay. You think, think that's okay, Drew, to have a two month run? Think they'd do that? Or you haven't beat Punk. Punk. Mm-hmm. Or you haven't beat. I actually wouldn't be. Man, no, I want Punk to win. I, 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 <laughs> I wouldn't. Yeah. Drew, you got to keep the title on Drew, actually. Yeah. He's hot. Mm-hmm. I mean, Punk losing would really tell us this is a new CM Punk. See, I oh. don't care. I, in real life, I don't care if he's a little, if he is or not. I think he's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I think you do what's best for the show. And I, I've i never I heard do, of Punk complaining about losing. And I do think Drew beating him would be what's best for that company and that show. I just do. It's just, yeah. what do you do with Punk after? I don't know. Unless you're going to like Punk versus Roman, you know, and and you, I, you, there's so many ways you could go. Uh, yeah. There's no wrong decisions here, but I, I do think if you put the title on Drew, you got to give him a little bit of a run because he is so damn good right now. He is. And I do still want that Punk Cody Rhodes battle of promos that lead into a program, you know, into a match eventually. Yeah, and Punk versus Roman, I feel like that. Would be <laughs> oh yeah, awesome as well. That would be. Yeah, AEW really, man. Uh, Jungle Jack Perry, just it, man. If he didn't do that line on the oh. pre-show, uh, good lord, they handed WWE a ton of main events, mm. a ton of money, just more yeah. money. They ain't need it, but they just got a whole boatload more. Uh, and to that end, today TKO's stock was up. Of course, yeah. it is. You, you know, you know why? <laughs> I mean, I think they had some big event over the weekend. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Besides and, that, wait, what else happened? What did I miss? They purchased Vince's. Oh, that's account. right. The buyback of Vince's shares. That's right. So you know how that works with consumers in general. That usually makes people feel more comfortable <clears throat> about a, <clears throat> about something, right? And it's less. Vince has what four percent shares at something. this point, something like that. Yeah, uh, with the the public shares, it's it's under five percent, four point seven, I think. So, did you hear the rumor? And I know this is just a rumor. Is it true, Rod, that they're thinking about going private? TKO. No, that well, Endeavor uh, is going private. Endeavor is. So, yeah. will that mean that TKO is or not? No, separate. No. It's a separate, yeah, separate. I wish they would yeah. because then you're not going to feel any pressure for nothing. You know what I mean? They can just do what they want on these shows and not worry about. The, like cancer culture and, 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 and like one of these UFC fighters running out of their mouth and then next thing Dana White's ask, answering questions for an entire press conference about things like that or vice versa with WWE stars. I just, I don't know. Yeah. Um, the, the good thing with that is it's keeping Vince out. <laughs> so Yes. That's, uh, that's been the good thing with it. That is. Yeah. That is true. Um. It's interesting. Someone could probably do a deep dive into how the stock market has reacted uh, since the TKO switch. Um, but let's. Uh, so with this, Jey Uso now is the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. Mm-hmm. He loses to Priest. You think? Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah, you, you can't. You can't switch the title yet. Nope. Yeah. This is a Triple H era. He cares about titles. I mean, look, this would drive me he nuts. Does. With, you know. Uh, Meltzer and a lot of those guys were like, oh, they could lose the title and get it back. It's like, no, having it on them for a while means so much more when someone beats them for it, you know, yeah. and it meant so much more Sammy beating Gunther after this long reign as if over, you know, Gunther winning it and losing it a bunch of times. Mm-hmm. What you're saying, the 24 seven title doesn't have a prestigious lineage. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> titles mean something now for the first outside of the women's tag titles. I feel like they need to work on that. Well, I mean, but... Asuka and Kari, what 
you, you can't have more credible champions. Ooh. Oh, for sure. They just uh, don't have credible challengers. Well, I think they do now with Jade, Naomi, and Bianca. If or Ooh. even Naomi and Bianca, if they want to spin it off that way. Bigfoot Sneaker at 499 saying, I believe AJ Styles is Cody's next fu feud. Uh, Tonga and Jacob joining him as Bullet Club. What do you think? That would be a twist. That would be a twist. Bloodline right now is the one that needs that injection, right? They need they need that they need something new while Roman's away and rocks yeah. away. Unless they just dissolve it all together and just get it off teeth. But you can't because they have what's his name? Yeah, solo. Uh, you want to want uh, solo, solo to be the leader of the baby bloodline? No, you got solo on his was still on his come up. Yeah, you can't do that. All that equity they put in them being strong and silent and mm -hmm. You can't just put him off television just because his guys aren't there anymore. That would suck. You him. know what? Him That's the problem the... right now with the bloodline yeah. is like they don't have someone that can lead it. Can lead it. Uh, Jay I, Uso yeah. could, but he's a baby face on Raw. No, you get yeah. Solo leading it being silent, and he just does a nod or a thumbs down. And you get Heyman mm -hmm. like being the the Solo whisper, the interpreter. Uh, mm -hmm. For solo, and then you bring in some new guys. You could do, you could kind of do something cool with that. It would be like the second iteration of DX, which was the night after Mania, right? When they brought yeah. uh, X Pac back, and yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. I mean, crazier things have worked, right? Yeah, it'll either be way, interesting to see. Sorry, yeah, I was gonna no, say go either ahead. way, I'm, I'm gonna be tuning in, you know, to see. Right. Uh, fun times of the games, Buck99 saying Drew should defeat Punk the first time. If Punk's first singles match is him losing to Drew, that will be very impressive. He's only had one match on TV so far, and he lost the Royal right. Rumble. So. Right. Yeah. Okay, Drew Davidian has now spent thirty dollars. We got twenty dollars more in no. super chats for two more parts. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Tell him like, all right, so if you screw something up, we don't understand it. You don't gotta spend money on it to correct it, guys. Yeah, just, no, just this is it. part two, Matt. Joe Davidian's uh -oh. got the fire like Dylon, and I'm gonna spit it for the audience here. So, and because it's all caps too, so you got to get the right energy. Joe Davidian, nine ninety nine, but this is no punctuation. So, pardon me. Go. Part two, then the return of the shield. Seth Rollins, the final legend, was the Undertaker, aka the Dead Man, showed up and attacked The Rock. My former guy, Roman Reigns, lost to Cody Rhodes. What a title reign! All one word. Then part. Three, what a title reign for my guy Roman Reigns. I rated out of an A plus, 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 and best WWE PLEs ever. And I'm going to rewatch a lot of times. This is the new era, which is the TKO era. He's right. All right, Dro, how much are they paying you to say all that, brother? I think we got Mojo <laughs> uh, Raleigh over here with the hype machine. <laughs> if you're being sincere, not being, you know, smart guy, I good. For, I, I feel very happy for you that you're this excited. Um, because it, I do, because it'd be cool to be that excited and that emotionally invested in it. I am, uh, maybe to not that extent, but uh, and if you're ribbing us, shame on you. <laughs> I'm gonna clip the R sound drop of Matt going, Matt, we got super chat. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> I've got to ask you guys this because right? you and your greedy ass is making them pay to it's take for charity. I don't make anybody do shit, Matt. Yeah. We we have instead made zero saying, dollars so far. Instead of, <laughs> instead of just saying, instead of just saying, "Hey guys, we make a mistake or something like that," you don't gotta spend money on super chat. He just had put three an parts. He had three it was parts. A three parts. <laughs> three parts. There. And Nish Malou, no. Well, that's no what I was chat. saying though. You're taking away the context of what I said though. I, I said know. specifically, if you screw something up, you I don't agree. gotta spend money on it or pay double. That's what I'm saying. My, my greedy ass is like, hey, got to get it right the first time or you pay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I got to ask you guys this. Looking back at WrestleMania now, last mm -hmm. night, WrestleMania night two, was that the best WrestleMania night of all time? Yes. Now, you got three, you know, which was iconic. You have 30 with uh, Danielson mm -hmm. winning. No, Hogan slamming Andre still is my number one. Yeah, four with Savage winning. I mean, there's there's a handful. It's but in my opinion, it's up. <sighs> it was very good. It was a very good pay per view that did not overstay its welcome. It's right for me after again Hogan slamming Andre at that Mania. I know when you watch that match back, it's horrible looking now. But like when we were kids, we didn't know that, and mm -hmm. everybody in the playground was talking about that for like weeks after the yeah. fact. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget that feeling, but uh, I'm not gonna lie. This feeling too, Cody stuff is everywhere. 
people in the gym that normally don't watch wrestling are asking me about it. Um, at a restaurant theater, like random people that do not watch this shit. Yeah. Is asking about it. So I think it hit hard. And I do think it's the most successful. How do you say it's not? Look at all, like, like Hunter said, look at all the numbers they did on it. Yeah. It's definitely the most successful, maybe most emotional too. I mean, when Samantha Irving can't, Irving yeah. can't say the winner without choking. Yeah. And, you know, it was. And and Triple that. H had a hard time. You could see his face was like beat red. He was trying to hold back tears. And, and he, he, he booked it. Uh, yeah, he knew it was coming, right? So, so, <laughs> but here, here's the thing. You guys get a chance to go on YouTube and look up the, you'll see the videos of people watching these things live and yeah. seeing their reaction to it. Look at all the bars going bananas for it. And just, mm-hmm. there's nobody that did not feel emotionally like touched by that finish and Cody yeah. finally doing this. So you're right on the emotional front. I've not seen anything more emotionally positive with, 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 with a, a show buttoning itself up like that. Mm-hmm. So perfectly. All the stuff he did afterwards was just the cherry on the top. And then top to bottom, I thought the show was great, but ending like that, yeah, exactly. I thought uh, it's good stuff. That night two, night one, you, you combine the two together in totality. Maybe it's not the best WrestleMania of all time, but uh, right. I thought the the second night is up there. Yeah. Well, that's it for WrestleMania weekend. Tomorrow night we'll be back to talk about NXT. No, we will not. <laughs> No, no, tomorrow night these guys get a break from me. I'll be oh on that my other God. channel. No wrestling. I'm going to watch uh, yeah. Predator. I've never seen Predator. I'm going to watch that. That's tomorrow crazy. Night. You got to no, watch at least the first three. Wait, wait. It's not about rise. Why tomorrow? Why is tomorrow night tonight? Why not just like tonight going to bed, put it on your phone, and watch it? Because me and my uh, wife are going to hang out afterwards. Oh, she okay. she refuses to watch half the movies I want to watch, and Predator is one that she. Yeah, Predator's watch. not. Uh, <laughs> co- Although I watched all those with my wife, but. Yeah. Different taste. Well, different taste. Um, yeah. I try to watch Bloodsport with her. She lasted five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't seen Blood, uh, Roadhouse because she refuses to watch it. But Who's the, the new Patrick one. Spacey? Oh, the, the new, new one. I, the, the, the new one. Oh, okay. Who doesn't love Jake Gyllenhaal? We should do a podcast on that. Okay. But, well, the new Roadhouse. The original, I will. The new one. Yeah, but, but I'll do comparing both. the two. Yeah. And then we'll talk oh. about Jake Gyllenhaal and Nightcrawler. <laughs> which is i think i watched that movie and i'm motivated after because i'm like in a weird way this is like a success story of someone that was really motivated towards a goal and he achieved it through underhanded means mm. he's great in it he's so good that's in that how, movie. that's how i am after i watch uh the social network anytime i get like really motivated i'm like let's go make a website <laughs> That what explains is... a rot, Raj, given uh, working for your wrestling rank. Now I understand it all. Uh, Bigfoot <laughs> Sneaker at 499 saying, hey, do you think AEW will ever be on WWE's level? Meaning like having a WrestleMania, I believe it can happen if they can take Paul Heyman. What do you mean if they can take? Like if they got Paul Heyman as part of their like writing team or part of... Paul Heyman ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Um, we The closest he ever came, I was with TNA at the time, He'd have to have a vent, a vested interest in the whole operation, is the way it was going to work if he came to TNA. Um, so unless Tony's willing to give up part of the ownership toward it, Paul ain't coming. Yeah. Um, especially now this part of his time in his career and at his age right now, no way. He's got a money meal ticket right now that he can just stamp for a rest until he wants to finish. Why yeah. would he mess? Why would he screw that up? And, well, and- speak. He he. Yeah, if you watch the Hall of Fame speech, he put trip this Triple H era over so big. You could tell yeah. he is. Uh, he's very happy where he is. So and he's Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman don't bullshit. Like like he, he does like like his, he doesn't put others over like that. Um, because he has his own ego, his for his own creative ideas too. Don't forget. Yeah, but as far as a part of the question, where do you think AEW oh, yeah. ever catch up to WWE? No. Um, okay. There's just too many advantages right now. He said for like as 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 the version of WrestleMania. Okay, will it be whatever their version of the pay per views is their WrestleMania will be as big as WrestleMania? Hell no. Does it one day twenty years from now, maybe ten years from now? I don't know. It, it, anything could happen. Obviously, like I never thought I'd see a WWE, but Vince ain't the owner of it, right? Anything yeah. can happen in wrestling, mm-hmm. but <laughs> the probability is very very. Very minute, my opinion. 
Yeah, I, it's one. Th- I could see all in trying to make that <clears throat> your WrestleMania because you've got the stadium. It is in you know uh, London every year, and it is not as going to be as hot as it was last year, as many ticket sales as it was last year. And then the next year is going to be even less. Mm -hmm. But having, I I do think it is a good idea for AEW to have one show that's their Super Bowl, as opposed to seven that are all the same. Mm. Definitely. Why, 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 Glenn? Well, no, they've got an East Coast one with Double or Nothing. They've got All Out for the or or West base. Coast. Yeah, sorry. West yeah. Coast for Double or Nothing, All Out for the East Coast, and then they got an international one with All In. So, I mean, it is... I think they're on the way to their big four, and then attendance will ultimately determine which what one the... is the mania. Well, it's yeah. going to be All In until it's not, but, you know, doing yeah. it in... It, at and, 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 and WWE's going to get smart and start running right before those shows. <laughs> I, guarantee, I guarantee it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Vince would have. I don't. I don't think Nick Khan. Can. <laughs> I think, you know, Nick Khan is all about the now, and it, it, they haven't announced next year's WrestleMania yet. And I know it's because <laughs> Nick Khan is like getting the, the that sure. bidding up. You know, and he is. Come on, Nick. Nick Khan trolled Tony a couple times already. Oh yeah, Bon oh, yeah. kid, and you know. his dad's a good businessman. <laughs> yes, you could run a business at a. Anyone can run a business at a loss for sure. Yeah. I have no problem with either of them taking shots at each other. No. AEW airing this footage, I've said it, I feel like that's minor league. It has nothing to do with one taking shots at the other. Do it at your heart's content. But using your TV to air that kind of stuff, that is no, no professional uh, league would do that. It would. I still want to pause to see how they do it, what it is, what we see, yeah. and then completely bury it if it needs to be buried. Or okay, maybe this was a weird way to do it, but this was an intro to get a guy back on television. I thought that would never be back on television. Mm. You think Jack Perry is going to be a star with... with <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. If this was the Monday because Night Wars... Because if he is, then that makes it worth it, right? Like yeah. if that footage does something super positive... You said it's like Everyone was like, yeah, Jack Perry, that's our guy now. If this was the, if this was the Monday Night Wars, they would show the footage and then they would roll Jack Perry out with a neck brace and a wheelchair with his leg up, you know, and talking about how CM Punk and like yeah, like they would really go over the top. But what's funny is um, I was about to make a quip about uh, uh, AEW doing this, and I was like, well, controversy creates cash. But yes, this is Tony Khan pulling some straight up bis- bis off shit about trying to pump a rating and get some uh, renewed interest showing this Punk footage. Yeah. Again, I'd still be embarrassed using a talent from another from yeah. Tony Khan always considers WWE his competitor, as he's told us a thousand times, right? So if that's the case, I, a thousand years I would never show one of my comp- competitors on my television no. show unless my guy's beating the snot out of my competitor from the from the other show. From the that's what show. Matt thinks. Um remember how petty to the point where it almost got sad of how easy he was trolling Dr. Dre after the chronic took off. And Easy was no. releasing records where he was just straight up playing like oh, nothing easy. but a G I thing. Meant, I thought you meant no, 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 the original Easy. Yes, gotcha, uh, yes. And people don't remember a lot of this because uh, uh, tragically he passed away. He got paid uh, for all. He got paid for all that. Yes, though. he did. But he was sitting there like saying, "Like I'm going to take Dre and keep making money off of him, even though he left me." And yeah. it was it was kind of what was it? I mean, no one yes. would bought those records, Matt. You and me. Bought uh, those real easy mother records. FNGs. Yeah, real we, mother bought we, we bought we bought Chronic, not uh, yeah. I, I think I Matt, both. I, did you buy fifty one fifty Home for the Sick? Because yes. that that slaps. Well, Merry motherfucking I, I, Christmas, still an all time classic. Easy E, I, I don't even love Drain Soup and everything, but like I loved Easy E just yeah, because sure. he was always shooting. And back then, like you know, you didn't see, you didn't hear, you didn't hear it all the time. Yeah. And he was and doing that uh in Snoop too, where his voice is just so different from everyone. Yes, else. yes, that's yeah. another part of it. You're right. Like MC Ren, you know, like uh there's Dre, Ice Cube, uh, and Yellow. Easy E. What about, what about, talking about what the mid carters of NWA? How come, how come Yellow never gets no props? But he doesn't have that that again I'm when joking. he comes on he a song. Yeah. Right. What he about the Arabian he, Prince? What about the DOC? Get, DOC. Yeah, DOC used to get say you remember how many times that name was dropped between because he wrote all, all the lyrics. Him and Ice but, Cube but like, wrote all those songs. 
but I always wondered, like, what are the fans that are kind of like, you know, mainstream fans? Have, do they have any idea who DOC is? Do you think they stupidly think it's short for Dr. Dre? They probably oh, think I can see that. I, I think they think it's Dr. Dre. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he hadn't rolled his Jeep and like lost his voice for all those years, I mean, he still wrote for Dre. He still wrote like all of Dre's rhymes. Mm. No. Um, but it's funky enough is like one of the greatest old school hip hop jams of that era, his first solo record. Um, but yes, but in NWA, there was a hierarchy. There was the, the upper Definitely. carters and the mid, the mid tier of yes. NWA. Um, yes. I just remember easy doing the, the, like using the voice changer to talk shit about Dre doing the buddy boy. Cause, uh, easy's yeah. favorite movie was the first power with Lou Diamond Phillips. So he's talking like the killer from the first power. You know what? I am going to watch Straight Out of Compton tomorrow. That's uh, th- have you seen that? Like before? He- hearing all this. Oh, I've seen it. Yeah, but now I want to see it again. Fantastic, especially and O'Shea, I mean, O'Shea Jackson, he's a huge wrestling yeah. fan. I I love reading his tweets. Uh, he's, he's hilarious. He's, he's hilarious. He's great. Ice Cube's um, done for those who don't know, and he is a gigantic wrestling fan, a yeah. big Roman Reigns fan. I agree with like every tweet he puts out. So, it's pretty- did you see Den of Thieves with him? Yeah. Mm-hmm. that's really good Matt you'd like it it's like heat like it's a heist mm. movie with a lot of twists they've got a sequel coming out this year I'm really really excited about that I don't so, know I'm thinking of uh, the glass knives I'm, I, no I'm no of dude thieves. Den of Thieves is great like it's a B movie uh, taken to 10 okay so Wednesday night we're going to be back to talk about the behind the curtain documentary what really happened between Cody and The Rock we're going to watch that Wednesday right. and then oh yeah and then sure. Jack Perry and CM Punk now um before we go I want to give a shout out to Majestic Marie she's talking about in the chat she's going through some health issues right now she's got a doctor's appointment she's nervous Marie better you find out what's going on and treat it and get taken care of we hope you're well but you got this uh just uh power through we're with same, you Marie same prayers for you girl we got you everybody else right. out there takes two seconds if you're somebody that prays, add uh, our friend Marie to it if you can. It's not going to kill you. It takes two seconds to do, please. Absolutely. He's at BP Matt Morgan. He's at the Raj Geary. I'm at Glenn Rubenstein. We'll catch you back here Wednesday. And uh, thank you for hanging with us WrestleMania weekend. Biggest numbers ever on this channel. Please, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Click that bell notification. And we'll catch you back here next time on Gigantic.